hello everyone welcome to Zeref game dev and in this video we are going to create the last of the platform type which is our rotating platform and the rest of the levels for the game and we are only going to create the first stage for the game so let's see what we have in our fourth state so our fourth state is just going to be an introduction for the rotating box so we'll uh, duplicate our second stage and uh, rename is as the fourth and uh, let's open our stage four and inside our stage four the only thing we need to change is add the fourth uh, data for that and for the text uh, we will change the text to be one four now it will automatically populate it with the number of diamonds it will require or for the ui now let's uh, ch change the position of our diamonds so the our first diamond is at eight negative six and our second diamond is at eight and six so i think there is only one and let's set our goal at 12 and 2.7 mm. and there are one two and three boxes the first one's at zero zero the second one's at eight zero and third one's at 12 negative four so this is going to have and after that it's going to have a circle so uh, which is going to be at the four zero zero position and our second diamond it's going to be at eight two so it's just uh, having the diamonds at the correct position and after that we are going to have a rotating box which we are going to create in uh, this level so the rotating box it's going to be a copy of our default box so let's go inside prefabs and let's deep duplicate this platform box and rename is as platform r o t a t i n g rotating box and everything else is going to be similar but it's going to have a couple of scripts more so the first script it's going to have is let's go inside the player and it's going to be a rotate script which is going to uh, get update the rotation for it and the second script is going to refer to the player and it's going to attach to the ground game object the uh, rotate is attached to the parent game object which is for the gravity and our uh, rotate detector which is going to be attached to the which has the ground collider and what it will do it will change the rotate value for our player so when the rotate value is changed our player will rotate in the required direction so let's see how the rotating box is scripted so uh we'll need to first create the scripts so the two scripts are going to be rotating box and our rotating detector so let's first create those two scripts so inside our platforms we'll first create our first script which is rotating box and the second script which is going to be rotating detector mm -hmm. and now there is an error the right select unknown importer for id i don't know why it happens it should not but we'll see it afterwards so let's go and edit our rotating box script so it should be open inside our visual studio and inside our rotating box we are just going to create a boolean to check when our box is rotating 
and after that we'll rotate our current box and mm, that should be it for the rotating box so let's create first a serialized field for the private float and it is going to be a rotating speed and fine next one is going to be our weight delay so uh, it's not going to rotating uh, most of the time it will rotate a little bit and then stop for uh, the weight delay amount of seconds and then it will start rotating and there is a public integer for the rotate value and inside our start function we'll first set the rotate value to zero and we'll start the coroutine the rotate and inside our coroutine it's going to the private i numerator uh what we'll do is first let's set the time passed to zero f and then let's first of all get the rotation it's going to be transform dot rotation dot Euler angles and after that uh we'll start rotating so we'll set the rotate value to be rotating speed is greater than the zero then we'll set to one else is going to be negative one mm, not f and after that while our time passed is less than 1f so we are going to rotate for one second and what we are going to do is transform dot rotate and we want to rotate it by rotating speed multiplied by time dot delta time and finally on the forward direction and after that we'll increase the time passed and we'll yield return null so after this rotation is finished uh what we are going to do is rotation dot z plus is equals to rotating speed so after one second the rotating speed is going to add it and transform dot rotation is going to be rotation and our rotate value will be set to zero and uh, we need to set the quaternion dot Euler of rotation and our rotate value is zero then we'll yield return new wait for seconds and we'll wait for wait delay amount of seconds and we'll start the coroutine i mean we can add a while loop but uh, Mm, let's just add a while loop so mm, nah, let's just have it start it again so it's going to call the start core routine rotate and instead of start here we need to call start core routine so that is going to be the rotating box coroutine which is going to attach to our main and next we need to change this is our rotating detector so what it's going to do is have a reference to the rotating box script and depending on the rotate value it's going to change the rotate value for the player so let's create a serialized field and it's going to be a private rotating box and we'll just call it rotating and then we are going to have a private player of player and inside our start method we'll get the player which is going to be game manager dot instance dot player dot get component and our player component and 
there are going to be a couple of different things uh, first one is going to be on collision enter 2d and if not collision dot game object dot if not collision dot game object is equals to player dot game object then we'll just return else what we are going to do is if our rotating dot rotate value and our rotate value is zero then player dot rotate value is going to be zero else if our rotating dot rotate value is equals to one so it is moving in the anti-clockwise direction which is the positive value player dot rotate value is going to be negative one and similarly it's going to be for the negative one value and here it's going to be positive one so when it enters it's going to change its value now when also it stays we also need to check it so let's first have on collision exit and when it exits uh the value is automatically going to set to zero so player dot rotate value is going to be zero mm, straight and simple and after that on stay on collision stay 2d and it's going to be similar so that should not be much difference so that is going to be our collision detector and we'll attach both of the scripts and inside our player i think we already have a function for the rotate value so it will be tick but somehow we'll manage it well it was not supposed to work like that but i didn't found any other solution so for the rotator we'll add a rotating box script which is going to have a rotate speed of 90 weight delay of 1 and rotate value of 0 and inside our box we are going to have a rotating detector script which is going to have the rotating box attached and now what we are going to do is we'll attach our platform rotation to our obstacles and it's going to add 8 negative 4 and the only thing that was remaining is to change the sprites color so that was it and now we should have a rotating box and i think that should be finished Oh boy, boy, what the fuck just happened? Well, there's a problem with our rotator. I don't know what happened to it. Uh, let's check it. So let's go inside our platform rotation okay that was an extra one uh, actually it should only be 90. <laughs> some of the problems happens and just a typing mistake nothing more so let's hit play and now the box should rotate and our player should also rotate and i don't know why our so it is rotating and I don't think there is any forces added. Let's see what's the rotate value. So the rotate value is zero, the rotate value is one. And let's see for our player what's the rotate value. 
zero, negative one and one. I think there is a problem with the rotation for our player. We'll fix it currently. So that was our stage four. And there's a problem with our goal, which should be at negative 4.3 plus two. So where was it at? 12 and negative 2.7 so it was at negative 2.7 so that is our goal and there are our two diamonds now let's create our fifth stage which is going to be similar to our fourth stage and yeah let's just create it so let's first fix our a rotate value which is going to be inside our player so if the rotate value is not equal to zero we are going to move by the force and the rotate value so that's time dot time, time multiplied rb dot add force and there's also no direction so why is it not working mm, it should be a problem with the gravity Mm, don't know let's just leave it as it is as we are using rigid bodies so i just don't know exactly what value to use you can work around with different force values or create another force for the rotating object now let's duplicate this uh, fourth scene and we are going to create our fifth scene and what changes are going to need is first let's set up the value to be the fifth ui data uh, the text is going to be five and all the objects that are going to be needed are first there are going to be three boxes zero sixteen uh only two one so let's go inside obstacles and let's delete every box first and that's first box at zero zero second box is at sixteen zero and after that there is going to be circle at four zero and let's rename this platform box to and I suppose there are going to be two rotating boxes. So this rotating box is going to be at eight and its rotating speed is going to be clockwise, uh, which is going to be negative 90. And there's going to be one more rotating box, which is going to have a speed of positive 90 at the 12th position and we are going to attach our spikes to both of them which are going to be at the top and the bottom so let's go inside our items and let's attach our spike to the rotating box which is going to have a scale of 0 0.5 at 0 0.5 X at one zero point eight zero point nine so it's going to be at zero point nine two five and one more spike at negative point nine two five but it's going to be flipped so these are our two spikes and we'll duplicate these two spikes and parent this to our next spike so now if we hit play we should have two differently placed rotating boxes and our diamonds are at different position mm. so let's position our diamonds so 8 negative 2 and 10 0 so the first diamond is going to be at 8 negative 2 and our second diamond is going to be at 10 and 0. 
and after that our goal is going to be positioned at 16 and 1.3 so that's going to be for the fifth stage let's duplicate this fifth stage and we'll create our sixth stage so let's go inside our stages and let's go inside our main menu first and let's see if we can play our fourth and the fifth stages which we have created so i suppose we don't have any type of our entering the scene name so let's go inside world one and that happened because we didn't add our fourth and the fifth scene to our build so that is going to be the fourth and this one's going to be our fifth and now if we play the scene it should not happen so let's go inside main menu and we'll see if we are able to play the fourth and the fifth scene Hmm, oh, we fixed that door. World 1 and stage 4 is loaded. Let's go to world 1 and stage 5th is also loaded. Hmm, so we are able to play it right now and that's going to be our fifth stage now let's create our last and the final stage not last uh the sixth stage which is going to be before our final stage which we are going to create so inside our sixth stage we'll change our pref to include our level data for the sixth change the name to sixth and let's uh, delete everything for our obstacles and we are going to create new obstacles for that and for our sixth stage is going to have two diamonds and one goal and our goals positioned at 16 and negative 2.7 and our diamonds are positioned at 8 negative 2 and 14 2 and let's start placing our boxes so there are three box uh, three circles and three spike balls i don't know how did this happen so let's go inside our obstacles so let's put our first platform box which is going to be at zero zero second one's going to be at four zero and the third one's going to be at 16 negative 4 and in between there we are going to have a couple of circles so the first circle is going to be at 800 zero zero. the second circle it's going to be at 12 zero, zero. I don't know why did I create this level yeah uh, all the levels were copied from the original game so there is not nothing nothing more to do that's how they were platform circle under slash 3 and this one is going to be at 12 negative 4 and yeah that was it for the level i don't know what was there anything different and that's going to yeah it included new items which are our spike balls which is going to have a decrease scale of 0 0.5 and it's going to be positioned at 200 and the next one's going to be positioned at uh 10 0, 0 and 12 negative 2 so the goal was to directly jump or just go there so that was our sixth stage and let's add it to the scene and we'll create our final stage so let's go inside our levels let's duplicate our stage 6 and we'll create 
our state 7 and let's open it up and unity youtube 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 they need to be fired assets scenes levels 100 kilobytes per stage and what size are our prefabs three to four kilobytes i mean prefabs are just scripts and some variables so it won't take much space so let's create our final level and it's going to have the stage seven and the name is going to be changed to seven and let's delete all of our obstacles and we are going to need one more diamond so let's uh, position our diamonds first so our first diamond is at 22.0 the second diamond is at 26.4 and 20.10 and so the diamonds are placed correctly and our goal at 28 and 9.3 and the only thing we need to do is place all of our boxes and rotating boxes correctly so there are going to be three boxes and nine rotating boxes and where is my settings project settings are inside the preference first here the audio mm. add it references i need to change the indexing in view where was the naming convention profile id built-in packages uh, diagnostics colors asset pipeline profiler tile palette right editor hmm. so don't know where it was let's close all of our tabs we are not going to need any of them so we have our scene and there are three normal boxes which are our obstacles and we'll rename that as one and which is going to be at 0 12 what happened with the camera zero 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 twelve zero zero Yeah, there's a problem with the goal. It needs to be attached to the obstacles. So the first platform box it adds zero zero zero. The second one's going to be at twelve zero zero and twenty eight eight. Let's put the second one. At twelve zero zero, and finally our third one is going to be at twenty eight eight, and our diamonds and goals are positioned correctly. Now let's add all of our rotating boxes. So this is going to be our first rotating box, which is going to be positioned at 
400 which has negative speed let's duplicate this again position at end which is going to have positive speed and after that the third one's going to be at 16th which is going to have positive speed negative speed it's going to have negative speed and let's change the names so we can get the count of how many boxes we have so platform rotating box one platform rotating box two and platform rotating box three and after that let's have platform rotating box 4 which is going to be positioned at 2000 but its speed is going to be positive 90 and we are going to have platform rotating box 5 which is going to be positioned at 1640 speed of 90 platform rotating box 6 which is going to be positioned at 24-0 speed of negative 90 uh, platform rotating box 7 which is going to be positioned at 24-4-0-0 speed of positive 90 and two more platforms to go and it will be finished it which is going to be positioned at 1680 280 and it's going to be speed of positive 99 which is going to be positioned at 2012 not 20 24 24 and it's going to have a speed of negative 90 and that should be all of our platforms and the only thing that's remaining are our spikes so let's go inside our items add a spike and rename that a spike one change its scale to 0 0.5 and we'll position it at 600 Second spike is going to be at 1820. And where was the naming again? Unity change duplicate object default name. So, 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 so. Editor, numbering scheme, game object naming. So, let me change it. So, it added project settings, editor, and asset serialization. Nah, not here additional extensions instead of prefab under slash one so now we can directly duplicate it so if we have spike ball 2 now we are automatically going to have a spike ball 3 so the spike ball 3 is going to be at 2220 and 4 is going to have 2220 and this is just going to create a wall and our file is going to have it 8 and 6 and 0 so we can't jump from there our sixth is going to be at 20 to 60 seventh one's at 20 to 8 and finally last one's at 20 to 10 and that should be it for the end of our final level and let's see if we can play it from our starting scene so let's go inside our 
main menu and let's start playing our seventh scene so it should be recording but i'm just seeing the first second so let's hit play and let's go and hit the seventh scene so it's a little bit choppy but we'll work with it okay so <laughs> somehow we finished it that needs to be changed for the default forces but that was it for the main scene and i think we should be able to see that uh, finish that scene and uh, there should be two diamonds for it and we didn't finish any of the scenes before and we have all of the scenes but we created only the first one and that should be it for the game so if you guys did like the video and uh, want to see more of uh, other games created in unity do like and subscribe the channel and there will be more games coming at least once in a month so uh, do follow along and all the files I have linked the github repository so you can get it from there and thank you guys for watching so see you guys in the next video